So that's a rounded timber that's only just been cut. Down the middle of your wood is the pith, which is here. You don't want your finished article to split, so you've got to remove that. So this is a, a tool called a fro, and uh, <coughs> it's not sharp. Okay, it's only for splitting and cleaving. The good thing about it is that you can position it exactly where you want it. Okay, so now you can see the pith that's running down the middle and we, want, we don't want that. So now we want to get a board out of that. You soon learn that getting rid of all the wood you don't want efficiently is the most important thing. So it might be nice to chisel away with an axe for hours on end, but if you can get rid of a, a lot all at once, it's, uh, it's helpful. So that's our piece of wood. So we now want an idea of the shape that we're going to carve onto it next stage is just roughing it out okay now when we're cutting with an axe we always cut vertically for safety you want this kind of stance so that you always want to be thinking if I miss where's the axe going to end up and if the answer's in my leg then you need to choose a different stance and this kind of sideways stance it looks a bit awkward but uh, you soon get used to it okay so we'll just start uh, And then when you want to go in the curve, you know, just slow it down a bit. Okay, so that's uh, roughly the shape we want. That's going to be the top, and then a reverse convex shape on the back so we'll start and put that in a bit with the axe the more work you can do with the axe the quicker it's going to be because it moves material right quite quickly it's not very often that I actually start with a, a complete picture of what I'm going to end up with normally just kind of set off and see what happens We're going to start working with a the knife. There's various different cuts we can use. This is one of the most powerful ones where you use your chest muscles. Okay, so we're smoothing away. To work on this bit, we commit what appears to be the cardinal sin of using a knife towards yourself, but it is permitted. You hold it with this grip and your forearm locks off against your stomach. There's no danger of hitting yourself. Unfortunately I've cut myself but that's all part of the deal. You can't make a spoon without cutting yourself. So the next thing we need to do is uh, to carve the bowl out. So what we need is a curved knife. Now this is a different way of carving because up, up till now I've been carving uh, up and down the grain Whereas this knife's designed to carve across the grain, and if you try and carve up the grain, it'll just tear in and make a horrible mess. And at this stage, I always tell people to start feeling what they're doing. Okay, so just run your fingers over it now and again, and somehow in some sort of mystical way. Do you enter the zone? Yeah, definitely. Tell me about that. <laughs> That's a bit personal, that. <laughs> That's why I ask you. <laughs> I make films about persons. Well, okay. Well, it's very relaxing, and you've got to concentrate on what you're doing, so... And you've got to feel what's going on with the wood. So there is a kind of spiritual connection between yourself and what you're doing. 
I'm not sure it's art because I wouldn't claim to be an artist, but I don't think you can make a beautiful thing without communicating with what you're doing. Become at one with the spoon. Trouble is, if you say that, people laugh at you. Only the ignorant. Only the ignorant? Right, yeah. okay, I'll remember that. So once it's uh, been sanded down, we can oil it. Now I use uh, walnut oil, which can be got from the supermarket. Nothing, no rocket science. And then it uh, brings the grain out. It helps if you warm the oil up first, and then it soaks into the wood better. And this just feeds it a bit. Helps to prevent it splitting and keeps it from getting dirty.